What's up, chat? What's up, YouTube? This is the Needed Podcast, episode 80. 80 bones, 80 buckets, 80 shows, 80 shows in. And this is a huge show because we got games to talk about. Uh, we got groups to talk about, people to talk about. Uh, a lot of things happen over this week, and we have even more games to talk about in the future. So we are stuck in between a review show and a preview show. So, I mean, this is the sh- this is the best way to get it done, man. I do want to show you guys I do have a new overlay for the podcast. Had to switch it up. I didn't like the words being on my face, and my buddy Rob helped me out. Got this new po- new overlay for the podcast. Appreciate all y'all support, man. The show has definitely been moving up. Been one of the best things on Man Twitch since we started it 80 episodes ago. This is 80 episodes in. So, um... Appreciate it. Like I said, this is for you guys. Uh, this is our show. We can talk about Madden. Now, the wake up today, all we talked about was, all I heard was about old Madden, new Madden, what Madden error is better, what Madden error is worse, all this. That's all I heard on Twitter, right? And for me, uh, I, I really don't care. I really, I don't have time to talk about that. I really don't. I think every error is its own. And that's honestly, could be a topic for its own show, you know, but we have so much to, to get to and so much to talk about within this, you know, two hours or whatever. That we definitely need to uh, to talk about that rather than you know what era Madden is better, what era Madden is you know was more viable, what was harder to play in, what was harder to be more dominant. That's not a topic I really want to get into. Uh, if you ask me my opinion, it is harder now to be dominant than it was when people weren't giving away a million dollars in Madden and you know hundreds of people weren't trying and online wasn't ex- as accessible for everybody. I think it's harder now. Just my opinion. I really don't want to get into it. But as you see my topics up here, my topics are pretty much just what they are. It's just a group. That's my title for each group. We're going to go over each group uh, and talk about each group individually as a group. Group A, group B, group, group C, group D. What happened in the group? What transpired in the group? What, what did we like about the group? And what, what happened? And what can we take away from those four players uh, and move on? Whether it's in the tournament, whether it's in Madden in general, whatever it may be. So those are my titles for the four groups. Of course, we got Bugs who... Uh, we had to boom a little bit, uh, and then uh, who was else was in his group? Was Kiv, or it wasn't Kiv? It was Joke, Volterax, and Pavin, who were all in the group with Bugs, uh, and they all they all took care of Bugs, got Boogie out of there. Also, them the Mo and Three group. That's Kiv, Mo, Drinny, and Mills. A lot to talk about in that group. That group was very entertaining. Next group. Noah Clef, Lil Man is scheming. That's, you know, Elmo is the king of the fighters, man. Lil Man just continues to have good performances. You know, it, we just can no longer. No, I know for a lot of us it's hard to uh, really not ignore Lil Man, but, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, he's having good performance after good performance. So it's definitely, uh, you can't ignore him that much anymore, really. But uh, what else, where else we at? And what is the last group, obviously, was the best group of the week which was Henry, Wesley, D. Croft, and Rage. And there's a lot I want to talk about in that group. You know, it's just so much. And anything you guys want to bring up, man, all you got to do is put it down in the podcast. All you got to do is put it in the chat. There it is. Elmo is playing good. Elmo is locked in. Elmo is, you know, he's playing as well as anybody, honestly. Uh, so for me, as I said, let's talk about the first group. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the Bugs group. Let's talk about, I mean... The first takeaway that I can take away from the Bugs group is that, you know, Joke had, you know, no quarterback. Volt had no quarterback and the human joystick. And I, I'll be honest, if you would have told me going into this group chat, if you would have told me going into Bugs and, and, and Pavin and Volterax going into their group, uh, that Bugs would have the best run defense in this group, I would have told you he would have went 3-0. I promise you, I would have told you that. As, as historically decent as Boogs has been on offense, if you would have told me, Chad, and you would have told you guys, if you would have told me Boogs would have the best run defense in the group between Joke, Volt, and Pavin, Boogs would have the best run defense. This is the best run defense we have ever seen Boogs have in any man tournament. And uh, so for me, um, it was disappointing that he wasn't able to score any points. Also turned the ball over. I believe most of the points that were scored against him was when he was on offense. You know, so his run defense was really good. His run defense was effective. Uh, and, and you know, so that that's that's definitely disappointing as a Bugs fan that he was not able to get out of there. Joke, once again, looks very solid to start a tournament. 
Uh, and later we'll go down and we'll see, you know, where he might stumble up, where he might fail, where if he has, you know, one of the tougher opponents coming up now. Uh, he did lose the game versus Pavin on a run commit. Pavin actually hit the right person on the run commit. Unlike me, you know, it's tough to pass against a run commit. Shout out my man Morvin with the Twitch Prime and my man BX with the Twitch Prime. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Bugs had really good defense. Bugs was really locked in. He just could not, he could not score, you know, and that's, that's a little rough. Uh, yeah, so Pavin definitely beat Joke on the run commit. Can I change this? I, I want to change a little something right here. Uh, I guess not. Oh, well. Now, so, as I said, Boogs did not make it out. He went 0-3. Uh, but like I said, if he was able to score, even versus Volt couldn't do nothing. Uh, Joe couldn't really do nothing on him. One, His first touchdown was pretty much off an of interception. Volt scored on Boogs on pick sixes. Poppin and Boogs had a decent game, if I remember, but you know, Poppin was able to come out on top because Boogs was not able to score, honestly. And if you would have told, I would have never guessed that. I would say Boogs would go ahead and uh, find a way to score. And uh, man, it's about scoring. I think it really is about scoring this year, man. Like I, I, I and honestly, it fits in with the sub. Hear me out on this. My overall take is that I, I don't think the run is good right now. You know what I'm saying? I don't think the run is good. I really don't. I think. Joke, I think Volt, I think Mills, I think Noah, no, and Lil Man. I think they're going to have a hard time scoring points. I really do going forward. You know, it's just the problem with them is that they will not make mistakes. They will not turn the ball over. I don't think the run is good. So, uh, I said, so Bugs had real good run defense. Anytime Bugs has real good run defense, you got to question, man, is this run, de- is, is the run really good? And also, as I should have started a thing, like we can agree on this right now, chat. Is that, bro, oh, the production, everything from EA side, from EA standpoint, man, everything this week was amazing. Like, there was a few technical difficulties. I feel like everything that happened, they breezed through everything very, like, effortlessly. Like, I think it was very good, and I think they really need to go ahead and, and have a lot of credit for what they've done through this quarantine, sending all these people, all this equipment, helping them set it up, helping them run these games and put on a decent production. I think it's been really good, and uh, I just don't want to start with that, you know. But like I said, Group A, between Joke and Volt and Pav, I mean, you got to look at Joke. Even with Pavin beat him, so, man, it's tough. Who do you guys think looked the most impressive out of that group? When we look about Joke, it has to be Pavin or Joke because Volt, it was crazy because that was the first time. Volt has looked so dominant in clubs. He's looked so dominant in salary cap this year. He's looked so dominant. But that was the first time that he played just a pure runner. And boy, oh boy, his run defense looked really, really bad. You know, so I compared to everybody else's run defense, yes. Compared to everybody else's run defense, I think Volt 1,000% had the worst run defense, right? Like, the worst run defense, uh... And, and that is definitely not going to be, you know, the key to success to keep him going forward. Uh, the, 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 his run defense was bad, so he has to tighten that up if he wants to beat Mills, if he wants to beat Joke, you know, and, and even Drenny. Like, he has everybody else in that group that, that moved on on that side of the bracket. Uh, he can run the kid or pop in their passers, but, man, it's going to be tough if, he, if he's going to tighten up that run defense. And Joke looked good. Um, like I said, he lost, though. He lost Pavan and... For me, it's uh, it's tough. I mean, can pa- like I said, and we watch P- P- Pavin play, right? We watch him play, and he looks really good, right? As far as bunch offense, he looked as good as anybody can look in this tournament, right? And even though he looked that good, we can all agree that he looked really good. Like, Pavin looked exceptional. He still, even if you make two or three bad plays a game as a passer, they can lose you the game in this Madden. And that is why the deck is stacked against passers because you can be you can be lights out for 95, 98% of the game. And then all of a sudden, boom, they make one mistake, one mistake, they're out of the game. They donate the points to the, a runner. They just their back is up against the wall. So that's why it's so tough to look at a passer. Is he gonna win four straight games? You know, playing that well. You really cannot make a mistake. And you can't, and it and it hurts you that much, you know. And so you can play ninety eight percent perfect. You make one mistake. Now, like I said, the one mistake, the one mistake that Pavin made 
was that lurk from joke, which was a little questionable. I, I mean, I probably could bring that up for you guys if you guys want to take a look. Remember that lurk? That lurk was kind of crazy, chat. I don't know if you guys remember it. That was the one mistake that Papa makes. If that play doesn't happen, I don't think the game is even close to being that. Oh, there we go. I don't think the game is that close to even being that competitive. Because, I, I mean, and, and this is something that Joke and Little Man and all them 1,000% are practicing. How do I beat this run defense? You know, how do I beat this 3-3-5 three, three, that 818 is is running out here? You know, it's actually the play, I believe, right here. You know, uh, and it, it's going to be tough going forward. And I know they're practicing. They're finding a way to beat it. Uh, but I believe this is the lurk right here. And this play, honestly, was pretty stupid. You know, and if this play doesn't happen, because not only is it a turnover when... That's just wild. Not only is it a turnover in in close fringe field goal range, it's a pick six. It's a pick six. So if this play doesn't happen, who knows what happened? Even if Pavavin goes up 3 nothing, or he goes up... Uh, if he goes up 7 nothing, man, that changes the whole game against a runner. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't think... I, yeah, this was... For him to pick this off, man, that's a little wild, chat. We agree this is a little wild. Do you think it's a low ball? Nah, I just... I, I, think, I think 9 times out of 10, that's not an interception. There's no way that's a pick. It, it does say low pass. He did low pass it. Okay. And, and I don't know why you would low pass this. You guys tell me. I think uh, as far as I'm concerned, like with post flag, I believe this is a corner route. He's going to catch this even if he gets blurred. But, yeah, I still, I still think nine times out of ten he doesn't get this interception. And it's a completed pass. But good lurk nonetheless. And that's what I mean about you make one bad pass and just – Seven nothing to a runner to a person that really can't score. That's what's crazy. Really, I mean, really can't score on offense. But then, so to donate three, donate seven, when you're you know on the verge of getting three, that's the stuff that's going to kill passers going forward in this tournament. Can they play mistake free for four straight games? Is pretty much the big question. You know, so that was a great game. That was honestly as the thing about Madden is that the thing about. That was a corner route. Um, but the thing about it was, the thing about it, um, can they play perfect for those four games? You know, and the thing about, like I was about to say, the thing about those games in Group A, after seeing Group B, Group C, and D, you forget about how good those games were. And that game was was exceptional, really. And that's, like I said, Joke is one of the better defensive players. And, and for Pavin to put a run on like that, uh, I definitely, it was a good game. So he's definitely one of the passers that we kind of, Route four, I know you guys are much like me. Once this game gets to this this point of the year, it's like we're kind of rooting against the runners. I'm rooting against the guys with no quarterback. It's just so, like, every tournament has been won with no quarterback. Let's be honest. Like, every quarterback, any every tournament has been won with no quarterback. And uh, we kind of want one for the passers. So, for me, Pop is definitely somebody that I'm, I'm you know, rooting for uh, the rest of the way, you know. Yeah, he definitely he definitely played good. He's playing good. Just got to really just can't make those mistakes, you know. But that, that was Group A. I mean, like I said, Volt, Volt's not going to win this tournament with the run defense he put on out there. He's just not. Uh, I don't care how many Bo Jackson clips because, like, as far as run defense, his run defense looked like 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 mine or yours. You know, that's, that's what it looked like uh, from Volt. So he's not going to put on with this tournament with that type of run defense. So, and like I said, Power and Joke, they, between 1A one, one and 1B, one though, they both look really good. Like I said, Bugs, I mean, the one thing I was talking about Bugs, he put so much cap in the defense, right? Like I said, not a lot of cap on offense, no tight end at all, no running back. And you look back at it, like, maybe he should have ran Trey Wide Flex. He should have ran something where he could generate some more points. Because the way his run defense was playing, I mean, I think if he was able to generate 10 points first joke and vault he probably wins those games honestly so uh now i want to say this i want to say this group was the worst of the tournament you know i don't i don't think this was the worst group of the tournament i i don't know i couldn't really tell you 
Bunch, I, and, and another thing with Bunch that, that Wesley and I believe Pavin have is a decent tight end. You know what I'm saying? A decent tight end. Not good. Obviously, I mean, the better you can get, the better. But somebody that can at least get four or five yards on the out route. You, I know you guys like putting them on the out route still. Even a drag. Even a, a you know a hitch. Even a even the, the wheel route out of verticals. A streak every once in a while. Like, the, you got to have a... I think that's more important than the wide receiver. I, I do think Boogs had decent wide receivers. It's just... Yeah, I, I yeah his team... I've never... I, I still think he could have won with it. I just really just... I think that's the second tournament he kind of got brain farted on offense. You know, I think he just wasn't really creative. And I think the the, the draft champions tournament as well, he was just dagger or die. Like, dagger the same shit every play, you know. And I think that really held him back. Uh, it wasn't as creative as he normally is. You know, he wasn't as sharp. I think his team, I think he could have won. Uh, he could have won some games in this group. All he had to do was beat Volt at the end and score some points, and, and he would have won. So it's not like he was far off. It's not like he got blown out. So, uh, you know, just this guy execute a little bit better, honestly. You know. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, I don't think he should have bet. I don't think it was, was was that bad. I just He just needed to be able to. I, I mean, I didn't mind power specialists because you got to be able to beat everybody. And But anyway, right, enough about that. We talked about his team last week. Like I said. It's not the arrows, the Indian man. If he pull out a couple different plays and just mix up his routes and, and really put some things out there, uh, bunch is tough to play. Uh, bunch is tough to play. It is. It is tough to play. I feel like it's tough to play on mutt head to head. You know, with these kids blitzing everybody or playing one four six, the the underneath routes are really not effective, and people are kind of hip to wide receiver post every play. Uh, so, you know, it, it was tough for him really, but. I'm saying, like I told you, if you would have told me Bugs would have had the run defense that he had, then uh, shoot, I would have, I would have told you guys he was definitely making it out of the group. But uh, that, that was Group A. I mean, I, like I said, Joe and Pavin are being great spots. Volt really needs to. Uh, that run defense is not going to win him this tournament. It's not going to beat Drenny. Like Volt is not going to beat Drenny, and that's probably the the man. Uh, the matchups in the next round are just like stupid good like just i we'll talk about the preview for the next round it's tough because we're stuck uh i I honestly i I, jesse albert i think books has been pretty good on defense the whole year i think books hasn't been good on offense this year but as i say that who do you guys think has been good consistently on offense this whole year you know like seriously, I've seen Kiv be Kiv, who I think is like the best offensive player, been pretty much been shitty the whole year. You know, I don't think anybody can consistently said I've been good on offense. You know, no, I mean Henry Henry lost to a runner in the clubs. No, I don't. I, I really don't think anybody. I don't think anybody is really that good. Wesley, you were terrible on offense this tournament, and we'll get to that. I'm glad you're here. Because I was Team Wesley, man. I might have a voodoo-like user. I might have to get off the Wesley train. Uh, yeah, I admit, but no, Volt doesn't count. Runners don't count. No, seriously, even Henry's, uh, it's just like, good? I don't think anybody is great on offense. I don't think anybody is great on offense, really. I really don't. But uh, that, like I said, I mean, as far as the room battle, I mean, Joke, was in, Joke has like... The, the old furniture, man. Joke had Joke needs like like he need a, a furniture upgrade, bro. Do you guys ever look? Do you guys what's you like like I, Joke needs a furniture upgrade? Volt having eyes on his door was demon shit. Like I like Volt having eyes on his door, bro. That was insane. All dark with eyes on his door, like bro. I don't want no problem. Volt is, you know, Volt's an evil genius for real. The all black room with the eyes. Volt's an evil genius, bro. <laughs> yes, Volt is the king demon. Um, Joke got the old ass. Yo, he really got the Bates Motel set up. Um, all right, so who was the other one? Pavin. We already talked about Pavin with the belt. He put the belt on the belt on the bed. Now I don't know if you know if he sparked that. And everybody else did it, or is it was something production told him? He might have set the tone for everybody else to put their belt out there. You know, me myself, I'd be like, yo, I don't really want to do that because he did that shit, man. I don't need it. But Pavin kind of set the tone for the belt on the bed. He set the tone. 
what I'm saying? But but yeah, I mean, as far as best, I, I probably, probably, probably pretty much wins that. But Volt is a close second. Bugs had a bookshelf. Bugs would have a bookshelf. If you told me one thing Bugs would have in his background, it would be a bookshelf. Really. Okay, get out. There you go, Bob. And that's right. And when you group A, it looks like your idea. So you hip. Little man's closet. Volt had eye decals, like like a demon eyes or some shit on his door, looking at the bed. Like, what the, yo, like, yo. So he like, so Volt goes to bed every night with these demon eyes looking at him, like giving him the power of a demon every night while he sleeps. I'm telling you, Volt is crazy, bro. Yeah, Kiv was a big disappointment, but we'll get to that. Like I said, talking about the rooms, like Joe got the Bates Motel, Volt. But let's talk about Group B. Group A, like I said, Joe Compartment really looked good. Volt got to tighten up that run defense going forward. Let's talk about Mo and three. Group B, Serious Mo, Kiv, Adrini, and Mills. Honestly, this was I, this was entertaining. All, one, because, I, one, you got to tip your hat to both Mo and Adrini. Both had rosters to run and pass a little bit. So you got to kind of, you know, that that's honestly, that's, I I think that's I think the eye close the eye strong eye those offenses are annoying as hell to play, bro. I really do, and I I, I don't know why they have. I guess they have had success this year. What do you guys think? Like, I think those offenses are really tough to play against. I really do. Um, but uh, the biggest thing with those, they're not as high powered. Not that Bunch is high-powered now, but Bunch can at least get you a 20, 30-yard play if you get wide receiver post popping or something like that. But I do feel like those offenses are uh, really tough to play against, you know. Um, Like, what I was going to say. So, for me, uh, haircut ratings. Yeah, but then Mills versus Kiv. Honestly, Mills versus Kiv was Madden. When we look back at Madden 20, right? You know how you look back at Madden, like that was the the slant out year, or that was the spec catch year, or that was the juke glitch year. We can look back at Madden 20 and and watch the Kiv versus Mills game, and that will epitomize what Madden 20 is. You're talking about one of this is one of the best offensive players ever. Literally, just people can blitz the whole damn team at him, and it just is a pain in the ass to play against. Really, so uh, that was kind of a tough, a tough defense or a tough game to watch because Mills literally could not get a yard, you know. And, and if you get if you get into those situations, right? So we get into those situations as Kiv as a passer, you know, and, and there's a bunch of passers in here. You get into those situations, man. Kiv would have been better off as soon as he got into field goal range. Kicking a field goal on first down, you know, and that's 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 what's crazy when you think about it. Like, bro, Mills cannot get a yard. I just need to get points on the board, and I can't risk taking a sack or throwing an interception. Just kick the ball on first down, because if Kid would have did that, he wins that game 100 times out of 100. It's crazy. Yeah, his run defense was really good. So looking forward to the rest of the tournament, you see, I don't know. You see, Kid has Volt or Drenny. And Pivot and Mills. And, and one thing that we haven't said enough this year to Kiv. Kiv between the Man Classic, Man Ch- all the tournaments. Kiv has had some of the best defense all year. You know what I'm saying? No, Mills does not need a commenting job ever. Yeah, Mills might have finished the whole tournament with negative yards. You know what I'm saying? Westbian, yeah, that that we're gonna get to that, bro. We're gonna we, listen. We we are far away from from the last group. All right, the Westbian group. All right, which I should have titled this, but what's about this one? Like I said, Mo went zero three. It really for me looked like Mo really didn't. I feel like he really just wasn't as prepared as everybody else. Uh, obviously, Mo is not the passer that Kiv is. Really, not even the passer that Journey is. Really, um. So uh. Mo and, and and honestly, one thing as I as I take away from Mo's game is that Mo had the two edge threat elites, right? He's got these two defensive ends. Now I will tell you guys this from experience in Madden tournaments. When building a team or even draft champions, right? I remember draft champions, 
the Madden Challenge, Madden 17. I got Team of the Year Aaron Donald, and it's like Team of the Year Clowney. Like, when you put faith in the defensive line, it only disappoints you. Like, you will only be disappointed if you rely on the defensive line. And part of me, and we talk about um, Mo is one of the best defensive players. He still is, always will be one of the best defensive players. But when you rely, when you kind of have that crutch that you lean on, that's a defensive line, you know, edge threat elites, two of them. When you have that thought in your mind that you don't need to play the same type of defense because you have those guys, I think it kind of let down Mo's defense a little bit in certain past situations. Uh, his defense was not that, not that good in that tournament at all, you know. And, and there was a couple plays where he kind of relied on it. Like, I'm going to get some, they're going to fight. I remember one specifically, he came out 335 wide and just rushed three, or 335 normal, just rushed three people and said, let me get some fight, you know. So I think a lot of times when you rely on the D line, the D line only disappoints you, man. For real, it really does. Yeah, but I just, I just really. I really don't. I, I really don't like. I mean, honestly, they're great. They do good. But when you kind, I feel like for somebody like Mo, who's a fantastic defensive player, to kind of have those and kind of lean on them a little bit too much, I think it hurt his defense a little bit. But uh, like I say he couldn't score. He threw interceptions, man. You throw interceptions in this Madden. You throw interceptions. You're fucking cooked, chat. You, you guys feel me on that? Yo, if you throw picks in this Madden, you're cooked. That's how I feel. You know. Just cooked. Just cooked. Well, anyway, as we take away from that group, Kiv, Journey, and Mills, I mean, Kiv, if Kiv can score points, bro, he wins. I, this is how I feel about Kiv's, Kiv's offense. Kiv's run defense showed me this. If he scores points, he wins this tournament. That's how, that's how I feel. You know, I, I, I truly feel that way about the way Kiv played. Uh... And if you guys remember, like I said, I, Kiv has to be in the early running for, for best defense of the year. Period. I I I would million percent. I would million percent feel like, bro, Kiv does, has not got enough credit for his defense this whole year. Bro, do y'all remember DC? Kiv, I swear he went out there and do four picks a game in DC. And literally, people, he could barely, and, no, and like he was in a battle every game. But he literally turned the ball over four times a game in DC. Like, it's unreal. Like, like he just needs to score points. And so I feel if Kiv was a runner this year, he might have won every belt. Seriously. I, the fact he's passing is hurting him one million percent this year. You know, so he just got to put it together, and he oh, I, I, he's got to be the favorite, best defense by far so far in the tournament. I think. You know. But uh, so that's pretty much how I've, how I feel about going forward with, with that that group. Drenny, uh, I, you know why Drenny pisses me off, Chat, and you hear me this about Drenny, and I, I as a football like, and I, I I take for I take you know to heart that you guys are football fans, like super football fans, right? I'm a football fan. I'm a diehard Eagles fan. Like, die hard. And I, and I always think that, like, you know, most of you guys that watch Madden, you guys are die hard fans. And, in fact, put your team in the chat. Are you guys, chat, uh, are you guys, what is your team you root for, man? And part of me is, like, I respect, you know, the Kiv that on the Seahawks, you know. I respect Pavin with the Raiders, you know, Clef with the Bucks, you know. And it, it, even, Wesley with the, even Wesley with the Falcons, you know. So, for me, when I look at, when I look at, what you gonna call it? When I go out there and I actually look at Drenny, literally have no team, even Joke, you know, at least Joke kind of tied himself with the Browns. He's got the Titans jersey for Spot Me, so that's always super respectable. Rest in peace to Spot Me. Like, but to see these guys that literally don't watch when don't have a team, bro, that shit is, and now Drenny's in the Dolphins jerseys. Like, bro, how many jerseys have we seen Drenny play in? Seriously, we've seen him in the Eagles jerseys. Broncos, the Jaguars, the Cowboys. Like, it's like, ew, chat, right? Am I the only one that, like, bro, how can you root for a man that just doesn't like football? You know, it's like, well, like, come on, man. Like, I just, it's just ugly. It's just ugly. Yeah, like, bro, I'm, I'm like a super football fan. Like, and for me, it's like, it's kind of ugly. So as I look at Journey on his list right now with the Dolphins logo next to him, Jenny's not Jenny's not winning this tournament as the Dolphins, bro. He's gonna have to make an executive decision. Shout my man Patriots fan with that Twitch Prime. And my man Lackey with the Twitch Prime. 
Yeah, he, Journey's just a slut bouncing from team to team. Like, and this is Journey don't even have a team. And this is and this is what I think about Journey. How do they watch football? How do the people like that watch football and like enjoy it like we do, right? I I, I just don't I I don't see I just don't I don't know, man. For me and for me it's frustrating and, and I can't I I think Journey has to make an executive. I don't know what happened to his Broncos. He said he was a Broncos fan. You know? When he first started, Journey was a Broncos guy, man. And I think Hear me on this chat. I don't like Journey as the foul, as the Dolphins. I don't like him. I don't think he wins. He can't win this tournament as the Dolphins. It's just not a team you go to, really. So that's and then Journey Mills. Mills, I think, just don't have enough offense. Honestly, I feel like Mills this whole year has been able to mix in a couple passes with his offense. Uh and I don't know why he went no quarterback, but we'll see how it works. You know, I think he's been one of the few that he actually at one point when he won the club, I believe he had escape artists and ran every play. So for me, that was like, okay, you got a nice little team. You know, you know, I really don't think he's going to be able to score enough points. But his, like I said, his his defense is really good. Yeah. So coming out of that group, I mean, kid, like I said, kid, get an offense together. He's going to make he's going to make super noise. Mills, if he get an offense together, journey. I can't get, I can't, I can't root for, I can't support Journey with these Dolphins jerseys, chat. I don't know how you guys feel. You know, I can't support it. But let's talk about Group C. This is the little man group, the king of the fighters, little man. Top 10 all time. Little man. Let's be honest, man. I, I like, at some point, you got to give him some credit. Uh, he definitely bagged. Little man pop clef. Yeah, he popped clef. Just lucky runs, bro. And we heard what's crazy about this group with little man, dude, is that we heard these lucky runs, bro. Lucky runs. Oh, before we do this, I do want to talk about something. Hold on. This is an error. I do want to talk about something that happened in the Mills and Journey game, chat. The Mills and Journey game, and you guys tell me this, bro. I want I want to go to this real quick because because this is something that came up that I did not talk about. I did not bring up, bro, and that is this play right here. You know, let's let's listen in and tell me, guys, fair or foul, chat. Being run by Drini and Ty. Welcome to the joy of Ultimate Team. You can have the same player on each side, and yet they're completely different ratings. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of Ultimate Team. The beauty here is salary cap, building your team around your strengths. Drini, you know, very balanced, but has a stacked defense, and his run defense has been unstoppable. Mostert outside, and he's got some room. Can he get away from Calvin Johnson? Megatron doesn't even look like he's running hard out there, and he ran down Raheem Mostert, the first big run of Mills in this game. Finally, the play Mills needed. He cooks it up when he needed it, a little stretch to the outside. No one out there on the outside for Drini, and Mills gets a big first down, and he's in business. Drini, Drini not happy with what happened there. Ty, what you hearing? It sounds like Drini can't pick a play. His controller is frozen, so he his it glitched where he couldn't even run over with his user, is what he sounds like he's saying, and now is not letting him pick a play on defense. His controller's stuck, so he looks like he's trying to uh, unplug it. Look at Mill's face. No, no, hold on. <laughs> Scummiest shit ever, bro. This is insane. Oh my god, y'all gotta see Mill's face, bro. This shit is funny. Oh my god, chat. This shit is funny. Wait till y'all see this. Wait till y'all see Mill's face when Journey come out. When he come out the huddle to see Journey in like in stock in some in some random defense. Look, look. I'll get back and pick Watch Mill's face. Defense. Watch his face. Controller Watch his face. So looks like he's trying to. Uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> He's not in the right defense. He doesn't have anything set up. Hey, look. This bad news bears is He's no one of them. The carry. <laughs> Yo. Hey, look, Mills yeah, is going to hurry up. This play. is the this is competitive Madden. Mills, Mills has the advantage right now, and he's not able to capitalize. Drini is in a computer pick defense. Mills recognized it, went with the hurry up, but he couldn't take advantage of it. 
Bro, that shit was funny. Welcome man. to online play. These guys playing at home. That's funny. I don't know man. if I've ever seen stock CPU plays get picked and, and still get stopped. It's still <laughs> yeah, he definitely bagged them. And, you know, users in the back. I'm getting told that he's saying, pause the game, Drini. What are you doing? That's what I was thinking. And he's not able to capitalize. He's not in the right defense. He doesn't have anything set up. This bad news bears is Franco Harris with a carry. And hey, look, Mills yeah, is going to hurry up offense. This is, the, this is competitive Madden. Mills, Mills has the advantage right now, and he's not able to capitalize. Drini is in a computer pick defense. Mills recognized it, went with the hurry Insane. up, but he couldn't take advantage of it. So I said, Chad, is that fair or foul? That's when I asked. Is that fair or foul, Chad? How do we feel about that? Huh? Is that fair or foul? Would you guys know huddle? What would you guys do? You know? Fair? Are we going fair? Is fair the ruling right there? Is fair the ruling you guys want to go with? Why would I? Nah. Man, he got to know something's up. Nah, he got to know something's up. He's not stupid. How many how many Madden games you've played? Somebody's not just going to come out in that random defense. No, he knew something was up. Stop it with the he didn't know. Yeah, as oh, we got a poll. We got a poll. We got a poll. It's a live poll. It's a live poll. Live poll only here on the podcast. Do you guys see live polls, man? Live polls. If you're not here Tuesday nights, man, you are missing out. We are sitting at 41 to 19 on the poll. Closing up 57. There it is. 57, 61 to 25. We almost 70% say that's fair. Normally they pause the game. I, I mean. Honestly, I don't know if it was a battery thing. Do you guys think it was just a battery thing? Uh, as we're going 102, 75% of people say it was a fair move. I mean, honestly, uh, I, I really do feel like... I, I don't really know how it would go. Like, how is something bad happen? How does something bad happen? Uh, and then does the, do you yell to the Discord, yo, yo, uh, um, we see 150 to 140. Almost 80% of people say that was fair game to no huddle in that situation. Um, Yeah, I mean, it was tough. You know, if his battery died, it's his fault. Obviously, if you're planning this, you should be plugged in. You should be plugged up. I pretty much plug up everything I play, let alone uh, let alone an MCS game. Drinny should have yelled. You think Drinny should have made more of a scene? Like, yo, 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 my, con my controller is broken or something like that. Possible. Could possibly be the situation. Really, I really didn't know how the layout is. Uh, you know, nah, it's a bit scummy, but, you know, I've seen scummier things. You know, all I've seen scummier things go down in these type of games. So, uh, I, like I said, I would probably say... Uh, I wouldn't say fair, but, you know, I wouldn't say it was the most, the foulest thing ever, you know. But like I said, it wasn't the control. Yeah, I don't I don't know what happened there. I really don't. I wish I could tell you guys I knew more. But uh, it was rough, and Mills 1,000% knew something was wrong. Because, one, he didn't have a user, and, two, he was in 4-3 three, three over or whatever. Yeah, and Mills has to do something because he literally can't score. It's not like he's got a prolific offense, bro. That was his opening. You know, like you have, sometimes you got to take, you take your shot. I'm surprised he didn't no-huddle him again, honestly. Yeah, he honestly should have no-huddled him again. But the only thing that hurt Mills was that he didn't have Mostert in the game, so he, he had to run with Franco Harris. But, shit, Franco Harris against bad run defense might be better than Mostert against what he was seeing all day, honestly. You know, but let's talk about Group C. This is Little Man. Get back to Little Man. Uh, shoot. I said this one was the Noah, no quarterback. Little Man, no quarterback. So Clef had to play against two people with no quarterback. Lost to both of them. So Clef, who we all know is one of the great passers in the game, lost to two people with no quarterback. Um, Little Man won the no quarterback battle. Scheming. 
Definitely had a different scheme. The one thing with him is, I mean, I, he doesn't run enough. You know, he had a little quarterback power out of Baltimore playbook and stuff like, bro, like, the pass is just not that good. Can we agree on that? Offense in general is really not that good. Like, I think that's like, I think that is a, a standard statement that we can agree on. I don't know what offense is good, you know? I feel like offense just isn't good. The difference between the difference between passing and running is that passers make mistakes, and that's what scheming did, honestly. You know, so I really, uh, I really do think uh, scheming both, scheming both in his final four run in the club championship and in his this tournament, man, he's got to run the ball more. Whether it be the power, whether it be the blast, whatever it may be, he has to just do that a little bit more, honestly. You know, that's pretty much uh, how I feel about uh, Bam's performances throughout this whole year. If he would have ran a little more, especially he was he lost a vote in the final four there. Uh, and if he if he looked back, if he would have ran blast a little bit more, Volt goes, he could have beat Volt that game because blast against Volt was kind of popping him for five, six, even 10 yards of carry every time. So scheming as much as as much as he likes being cute, he likes being scheming. He likes being that person, man. If you look back at it, man, if he would have stuck to just more basic run the ball and just play defense, man, he would have been a lot better off than what he does forcing the ball and passing and stuff. My man Grizzly, there he is, man, with the tier one. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. You know? Yeah. But as I look back at this, man, like I said, Clef lost to two people with no quarterback. You know, Clef's... You know, guys know I root for Clef more than anybody. So shoot, for I mean, lost a little man in a game where little man was begging for free for lucky touchdowns. Uh, lost to Noah bad. I mean, when he played Noah, the game didn't mean too much. I don't know if you know you'd rather play Wesley than than at the time. I don't even think they knew who they were going to play. So for me, two and three C doesn't mean too much. Because I don't think there's a drop-off between Henry and Wesley. And on the other side, I don't think there's a drop-off between Drini and Mills or, you know, Pavin and Volt. I feel like at this point, you're going to play a goon regardless. You know what I'm saying, Chad? So when I feel like when Volt and, or when Noah and Clef played, there was really not too much to play for. Um, the group actually worked out because it was kind of over going into the last games, which kind of sucked. But uh, overall, you just got to talk about Little Man. The, the Elmo song, can Little Man win this tournament? You know, is does he have enough offense to win the tournament? Because he looked really good on defense. I think for like everybody kind of looked good on defense. And uh, does little man have enough, Chad? Do any of you guys think little man can win? You know, can anyone, can little man win this whole tournament? You know what I'm saying? Like, can little man win? I feel like little man is a person that continues to have good performances. But I don't think anybody ever believes in little man. You know, I don't think anybody ever believes that he's going to win the tournament. Like, he can get Final Four. He can get, fi- get in the finals. He can make any run. He makes runs pretty much every tournament. And I don't think anybody really believes he can win the whole tournament. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean that's, he's just being real. You know, I just want one lucky touchdown. You know, but he might not hit the play, kid. That's what I'm saying. One game at a time. I... I want to come on here and say somebody without a quarterback is not winning, but I I have been wrong all year about that. Yeah, I see you're right. Little man has been super prepared the whole year, so I mean you got to give him some type of credit on that. As we move on, man, I mean that that's group group C. Uh, nothing. I mean we didn't really like when Clef got popped by Noah. Even the game didn't mean nothing. I we didn't like the way that game went down, Chad. I'm gonna be honest. We didn't like like the way that game went down. I, it was rough. It was a rough feeling. I know Clef wanted to get that win, even though the game didn't mean enough. I know Clef wanted to get that win. You know. Yeah, I mean, even though there's really good run defense, I really just feel like can you score ten points on the runners? Really. You know, that's what I'm saying, Chat. Can you score on those guys with no quarterback? Because I don't think it's as powerful as it. As it, as it I, honestly, I, I really don't think it's ever been high powered. 
Like, even Volt, I don't think Volt was amazing running the ball. Noah lost two games in his group. Like, it's not like the run has been super power. Now, with Ezekiel Elliott in the Classic, it was OP. It was it was unreal. Yes. I won't even want to talk about that. But I for the rest of the year, I never thought the run was super duper. I don't want to say it's like high powered. It's just they're just praying for that one run. And then that's all they need when their defense is that good, really. I would say it probably is the highest powered O all year. Oh yeah. Beast mode with a nasty streak. Oh yeah. That I mean, yeah, that yeah, that was kind of that was kind of the nasty streak was different. That shit was super different. I would say I, I don't think D. Croft has I guess he's kind of balanced because he does run the ball a little bit with Chris Johnson. I would say Journey's probably the most balanced, really. Yeah, I would say Journey is probably the most balanced. You know. D. Croft Journey. Yeah, those I mean those those are the only two balanced people left, though, right? D. Croft and Journey are the only two people with the ability to run the ball and pass the ball. Other than that, it's just all passing or all running. You know, so there's two people left with the ability to do both. So, yeah, I think everybody's offense has been bagged at some point in this tournament. Like, it's not like, like I said, we talked about, I don't think anybody's offense is good. I mean, I, I really just don't. Yeah, D. Croft definitely does look good. He does look good, but it will get and and, and you help me transition into this group here, Group D with the dots. That's why I put it. Group D is for dots, and honestly, uh, it, it was it was super fun to watch. That being said, between Henry, uh, be- between Henry Wesley, uh, Rage, and D. Croft, it, it was all really great games to watch. Really fun, uh, and the whole time as I watch this tournament or as I watch. This group, I all, all I think about to myself is all these four great players are going to lose to somebody without a quarterback. You know? So we see all these routes, all this coverage, all these blitzes. You know, nobody was really blitz eight people. Nobody was real heavy run. Uh, and we watched those guys play, and all I thought about was, like, they are going to lose to somebody without a quarterback. You know? So it's kind of nuts to me. Uh but I do want to talk about something uh, that kind of uh, kind of upset me a little bit. I know Rage was somebody we kind of we we kind of said was going to lose, um, right? No, that's how it was. We kind of all picked him to be out of the group, right? It's kind of a player like how did he get there type of player. That's kind of was our attitude last week, right? Rage is zero and three. Rage is out, uh, and, and and you know let me tell you this. Uh, that was that was pretty much our 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 conclusion to the tournament was Rage wasn't going to make it. No matter he played good, you know what I'm saying. He played real good, uh, and at the end of the day, he and he put out um, where is it? He did put out this tweet. It made me upset a little bit as a as a Madden fan, as a person that you know. And he said, "I deserve the disrespect I get." Now, first of all, because now, and, and and this made me mad because one, if we make if I make fun of you guys or I don't pick any of you guys or you know you're the consensus to go zero and three, it's just it's not necessarily that it's a knock on you, you know maybe you're up against you know bigger names and and let's always remember this about Madden, bro, you're always it, you're always picked off name, dude. People don't know shit. You know what I'm saying? People in the community don't know shit. People on Twitter don't know. Nobody knows shit. About you, about how well you can play, about you know how you played against this guy, how you match up against this person, how well you prepare. They don't know anything. Literally, all they pick on is do they know this person's name. That is how everybody picks in these polls. That is how they pick in the polls. Part of it is that kind of how I pick. You know, I'm not going. If Rage is in a group with Skimbo Kiv and, and Ghost or Skimbo Kiv and Journey, I'm I'm not going to pick Rage. It's just it's simple and plain. You know what I'm saying? Like. So you have to understand that that's not necessarily disrespect. Also, man, you got to be, at the end of the day, if you make Madden Bowl, you are one of the top 16 players of Madden this year. Nobody can take that away from you, man. So that's accomplishment in its own right. So at the end of the day, all these people that are disrespecting you, I doubt it was one of the other 15 people in the group. You know what I'm saying? 
those people that are in the same place as you, the top 16, those aren't the people disrespecting you. It's the people that are watching at home that want to say shit, you know, to try to make you feel bad because they're jealous of where you're at, myself included. But we are still going to joke and to jokes about you if you go out there and get popped like Boogs or Mo, you are going to get laughed at. That's part of the game. But uh, never feel like you deserve disrespect for getting to this tournament, to getting to this point. Uh, I, I, for me, that made me upset that someone could feel like they deserve to be disrespected. You know, and, and for me, uh, you should always be proud of yourself for the accomplishment of making it to Madden Bowl and to, to being one of the top 16 players in Madden 20, without a doubt. You know, so for me, uh, I didn't like that. And I, I felt like, you know, I shouldn't be the one leading the charge of making somebody feeling like they're disrespected, honestly. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, so for me, uh, that definitely, uh, definitely, I, I didn't really like, I really didn't like that someone felt, uh, that they deserved this respect. Cause that's, that's not, you know, like as much as we joke, it's a huge accomplishment what Rage did this year and he should be proud of himself. Honestly, no, for real. I, I really just. I don't ever want y'all to think, like, just because I bust y'all balls that, you know, you didn't accomplish something, really. But back on to Group D, Henry, Wesley, D. Croft, Rage, who played good. Rage was down 14 nothing in the game. And first of all, Rage's hoodie was fucking nuts. You know, Rage's hoodie was nuts. I don't know what it was. It was like the boy. There's, people told me it was the boyfriend hoodie, you know, from Victoria's Secret. You go get, like, the 5X hoodie, cut the sleeves off. Um, that hoodie was kind of nuts. He was drinking out of a, 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 a red solo cup. He was Pepsi can Then he went to red solo cup. They definitely said, uh, Wesley looked like a lesbian. I'm not going to say I agree, but, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say I agree with that. You know, because I, I think that was a little rough. But at the end of the day, I mean, he did kind of have a little bit of, I don't want to say lesbian type of vibes. But the hair was a little wild. But you can't really get, get upset at somebody because their hair is wild. Because, I mean, bro, it's quarantine, chat. You know what I mean? Like... It's nothing it's nothing we can really do about haircuts unless you're bald like me during quarantine. Right, chat? Like like Wesley kinda might look like like, you know. I mean he he was looking kinda wild. Now a Wespian would I think y'all took it a little hard a little too far with the Wespian comment. I think that was a little bit too wild. You know, I think I think we went a little bit too far with that, you know. You know, I think that was a little bit too far, too tough, you know. I mean, he got he got a little bit of vibes, of, you know, like This is my question. What would Wesley's I mean, like I said, what what what's Wesley's name? If Wesley was a Wespian, bro, what what would his name be? I mean, I think I take him for a Tina, you know what I'm saying? Strong Tina vibes. Wasinda. Yeah, I really don't. I really. Karen? A Karen? I don't know, man. Carrie. <laughs> Yo, I don't. Wesley, Wesley got to go baldy, bro. He got to go baldy. It has to happen. Got to go baldy. Karen, <laughs> oh, Susan, Tina. I, I'm going Tina, bro. Damn, my man Wesley, bro. Yeah, this, this, this my man Wes with the, with this. I know I might have to put this on the squid, bro. We might have to really get rid of, of this. Uh, we had to get rid of the squid emo, bro. Somebody put this squid, Chris with a K. Yeah, this is definitely Chris with a K. Chris with a K. No, Chris with a K might be the number one dyke name of all time. 
No, I need to put this on the squid body. Yo, put the squid emotes in the chat. Put I need to put this face on the squid body. Chris with a K. Taylor. Y'all gotta start killing my man, bro. This, uh, like I said, I was on the Wesley train. Definitely was on the Wesley. And like I said, we go to the Rage. Rage's hoodie was wild, bro. Rage, first of all, Rage... I'm gonna be real, Rage. You gotta come on home, bro. Like the, I could. This is how my hair was, bro. It was how my. It, not when I was 21. As he goes to the red solo. Oh damn, he's not even on the screen. Y'all can't see Rage. I need to get the full, the full Rage. There it is. Boom. There he is, boys. The Rage man. Like ho. My man Rage hasn't cut the hair since. Yo, he was on quarantine before the rest of us were on quarantine. Bro, he, bro, Rage look ready for battle, bro. Between the boyfriend hoodie and the hat, bro, Rage, bro. Rage definitely don't give a fuck, bro. He really don't. He got a hoodie with no undershirt. Like, just, bro, this is nuts. Rage, bro, how your sideburns this long? Like, bro, this is like, this is Siwoo type of shit right here, bro. This is Siwoo-esque sideburns. Like, come on, bro, with the boyfriend hoodie... Nah, this is really... Rage, you gotta come on home, bro. You got to... This is how my hair was when I was, like, 30. You know what I'm saying? Where you had to make sure... If it wasn't combed right, you was looking bald. You had to make sure it was combed perfectly. You know what I'm saying? This is Siwoo-esque sideburns right here, chat. Siwoo-esque. Yeah, hoodie... The boyfriend hoodie with no undershirt. Bro, this looks like... a. A psychiatric ward hoodie like when you go to a psychiatric ward this is the clothes they put you in right here for real hella perks ray is definitely look like he, he, he buy <laughs> he buy <laughs> hella pills <laughs> don't raise look like he buy hella pills pick hit my guy with the twitch problem this is definitely a psychiatric hoodie there he is man talk to god is in the chat Wow. Now, no. I'm telling you guys, man. Now, listen, we're all men in here. I mean, hopefully there's a few women in here. But listen, man, if you shit start going, bro, it's time to go. I'm telling you. My shit was to the point where if I didn't comb it perfectly, you had, I had ball spot everywhere. It had to be combed perfectly, and it only lasted an hour. Because after an hour, it was, it was over. It was GG's. Only lasted one hour. The red cup, I asked Rage. He said they didn't let him use his Wendy's cup. Now, tell me on this, chat. So you go to Wendy's, right? This is this is another thing. He said it was from his Wendy's cup. So you go to Wendy's, Wendy's quality establishment. You get the spicy nuggets, right? So you get spicy nuggets or you get the number six, which is the spicy chicken sandwich. Always a W from Wendy's. The Baconator is a W from Wendy's. Whatever your Wendy's order is. By the way, side note, Wendy's... Wendy's breakfast, fire. Wendy's breakfast is fire. I don't know if y'all been there yet. Wendy's breakfast is a big W. I'm telling you, it's a big W. It's a big W. Anyway, so you go to Wendy's, right? So you go to one, my Wendy's doesn't make it out of the car. I don't know how y'all eat fast food. If I go get fast food, by the time I get home, I done smashed my nuggets and my fries by the time I get out of the car. I don't know what, the, I don't know. I, I feel like you're a fucking psycho if you get fast food, don't eat it, walk in the house, then take it out the bag. I think those people are psychos. Like, what are you doing in your life that you have time to drive home with the food sitting next to you and you're not eating some of it? Can I, I'm be honest? That's all. Like, you got to finish the food before you get out the car. How is that? I mean, it's not like, seriously. So y'all definitely sit there with the food. So you keep, oh, thank you, sir. And the food sits there for 10 to 15 minutes till you get home. Now, you could live right down the street. I've always lived close to establishments. I feel like that's key when picking a spot that you want to live in. Got to live close to establishments. You want to, you know, you don't want to be Skimbo. Skimbo lives, it takes him an hour to get to Taco Bell. You don't want to be there. No, I'm just saying. No, I don't really eat while I play like that. I don't really eat snacks or nothing like that. Oh, I'm, yeah, you got to pick it. Listen. A seat warm. Put on the seat warmer to keep the food warm.
Bro, y'all are nuts. No, y'all are nuts. So anyway, okay. Okay, so that's another topic. So you guys are, are, are keeping the food till you get home fucking weird you know because now you now you just got it now you're spending and it probably takes you guys a half hour to eat mcdonald's let me tell you that it takes you a half hour now okay you got your bag at home what is do you like take things out of the bag and place them down or are you the type that because honestly if i do that i i knock the bag over and rip the bag so i kind of can use the bag as like a placemat So my food, and that's normally if I'm at the restaurant, you know, so my food isn't touching their table or anything, rip the bag open, use it as like a napkin slash place, place, placemat. Or do you guys take the food out of the bag and put it like here and there? Cause then you could also dump your fries halfway out, you know, something like that. You know, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to make sure we're on the same page with fast food as as I continue to talk about Rage's cup. Cause Rage said his cup. His cup was from Wendy's, right? So how long can your cup of, of juice or soda from Wendy's, how long can that last? And can you ever transfer the Wendy's cup to another cup to drink it? That's all I'm asking. Because because for him to be in the last game with the Red Solo Cup, we're talking six, five, six hours from when he went to Wendy's, right? It has to be. So, I feel like the transfer is a little wild. Yeah, I feel like you can't trans- transfer. So, Uber Eats. Do you feel like Rage went Uber Eats mid-group play? Did he try that? Did he go for that? I feel like that's a little risky, Chet. Do you think he had his parents run and get him some Wendy's or something along that lines? That could have been in the, in the works. But, if you remember, the Red Solo Cup made an appearance in his second game. So... You know, it's all possible. So, even getting food mid-group play is kind of wild. I think that's kind of wild, honestly. You know. But, we'll see. Diesel, move on the fuck up out of the chat for 10 minutes, bro. Think about whether or not you want to be here or not. God damn. Boy, don't, he don't add nothing quality. Like, we all talking. He the only one that's mad. Take a lap. Right? To take a We all talk. Yeah. We're all talking. Jeez. A full, move on. Let's talk about Group D. What do you think they should have did on third down? The fuck? Like, God damn. I do as we get to Group D. The best game of Group D, uh, obviously, Henry versus, whatchamacallit, Decroft. Now, I want to point you to a specific play in this game here. I do want to point you to a, a specific play as we go to this game right here. Now, like I said, this was the best play of the tour, the best game of the of said tournament. Where we're at, where are we at, where are we at? Boom, boom, boom. Now, my man J-Rock with the sub, man. There it is. But I do want you guys to focus. I do want you guys to focus on Henry here as I'm going to block out this. Block out. I want you guys to focus on Henry after this play. I want to focus. I, I want you guys to focus on this play. Not. I, it's not this play. As he just, I mean, he's he's really up against it right now. Like, and you're talking about he's down by three, third and 16. Yeah, D. Croft is, I, I man, is, and we see a post. Is there no post flag? Oh, no, there is. And we lost that guy. That dance will lose 100 times out of 100. This dance move, bro. I, this dance move loses 100 out of 100. 100 out of 100. This dance move loses. Yes. Yes. 100 out of 100 times this dance move loses.
Yes, you can't. This, 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 this can't. You can't win like this. Now I will tell you. You know why I like D. Croft, man. You know why I like D. Croft, man. Cause like, like, I, I just I do want I do it. I, I, you know why I like D. Croft. We laugh at this, bro. Yeah, that 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 is one thousand percent worse than he could. If he would have popped the perk, oh my god, he he might have won. You could pop a perk and win, but you can't do that dance. That dance went a million percent worse than anything I've ever done. But you know why I like D. Croft. He blamed himself for this play. He blamed himself. Now, most of you cocksuckers would be mad and sucks. Oh, my gosh. I just, I, I was going to win. I was going to be the one seed. Oh, my gosh. Look, Madden cheat me. Look, how do y'all play this game? Madden sucks. Boogoo, 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 boogoo. Right? That's what you guys would have said. One million percent. And <laughs> rocks in the chat. There he is. No, but like, I'm dead ass. But after this play, after this play, and and I, I saw at the same time, like, if you watch D. Croft, he definitely could have did a little bit better right here. He kind of like got behind him as we watched the dance again. This has really got to be a patented dance. It's got to be the double points. Like this is just this. This has to be the sub alert, Henry. Whenever you, whenever you start streaming, whenever this is the sub alert. If you don't make this the sub alert, then we're done. The, the, right, chat? One million percent. This is the sub alert. Uh, 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 four points and a phone. He did four points and a phone. Any man that breaks out the phone, look at the phone, look at the phone. Uh, uh, yep, the phone. Yo, four points and, yo, four points and a phone. That's the sub alert, one million percent. But D. Croft, like I said, he took blame for that. He knew the game was rough. Uh, He knew the game was rough, and um, he could have had a little bit better stick on that play. But uh, nevertheless, um, I don't know. I guess Henry runs here. Yeah, this is smart. And then just spike it. Now, here's, like, this is what, this is what I, this is an L for me. Chat, this is an L all the way around for me. It is a L for me, chat. Because I thought after this run, Right? The number one thing you do is spike. Right? Because if you no huddle spike right here, you might be at 15. You might be at 10 seconds. You can wait till you get down to three seconds. Now, of course, D. Croft has a timeout. But he would probably use that timeout to ice the kicker, which he does anyway. Right? So, Henry essentially could have no or spiked right here, stayed at the line till three seconds, then snapped it to guarantee that this field goal was the last play of regulation. Guaranteed it if he would have no if he would have spiked the ball not spiked the yeah spiked the ball on third down right here, right? If he spikes the ball on third down, boom. But instead he goes to call the play and and then does this, you know. So that that that's the first part of the mistake. Cash is the field goal no problem, because you know he really doesn't care. He really doesn't feel any pressure. Because once you do that dance, you don't feel any pressure. And then he goes for the, the squibber. The squib... I mean, he didn't even... Like, look how fast... Oh, no, I guess that might have been a replay. Like, look how fast he calls this shit. Like, he hit squib before it was on the screen. I mean, he hit, he hit squib before it was on the screen. Like, it wasn't even a thought. God, look at these white guys chasing him, bro. That's rough. Yeah. Yeah, see? Karma gets you, man. That's how I had And that's what they say, man. Madden giveth and it taketh away, man. And, and D-Croft was hype. I mean, it's hard not to root for D-Croft, honestly, bro. I feel like he, I feel like he really grinds this shit out the game, like... As far as practicing and, and being together, really. You know what I'm saying, Chad? I feel like he really uh he really locks in and really puts a lot of work on the on the game, really. You know. Yeah, he's a grinder and he definitely uh cause cause you could tell, like I, I remember I want to say Madden 18, like I did a Mutt video versus somebody, right? Like Mutt play, like Madden 18. I didn't know who the hell it was, but we had a good game, right? And uh, so 
like probably a year ago, somebody commented on the pick. Damn, you played D. Croft before he before he got good. And I look back, it was him. Back, I, that was who I played him much. That I did some YouTube video with uh, against the game, man. You could just see how much better he's gotten in two or three years. It's just important working, you know. So it's hard not to root for him. And the attitude that he has, as far as yeah, I got mossed, I got tea bagged uh, to tie the game up, but I could have did better. You know, I could have had a little bit better user there. And it was partially my fault why that happened. And to have that type of attitude is what's always going to lead to him continue to get better, really, for real. You know, so for me, I really think he has a good attitude and, and he's really grounded. So it's definitely uh, easy to root for D-Croft. Uh, you know, and that's just that's pretty much how I feel. My man Kenny Johnson whispered to me and say, "What's up, Dub? I started this stream of stuff. Could you help me get some followers? Follow Kenny Johnson, bro. Kenny Johnson, if you're still in here, bro, we'll shout you out right now. You know, so he's not in here. Kenny Johnson, he's not in here. It's not part of the show. Kenny's not part of the show. That's what I mean, man. You got to be part of the community before you want the community to help you. Just saying." R.I.P. Bro, just not real. Didn't stick around. Did not stick around for the show. Did not watch the show. Did not learn anything. Go follow Kenny Johnson. Let me see how many followers my man Kenny Johnson got. What he got? What he working with? Then he's gone. He's not even a. What is this? Unless you've got a time machine, that content is unavailable. Damn, Kenny Johnson. How can I tell people to follow you? You're not even like... That's nuts, chat. That's nuts. GG's, man. GG's. It was Volt. Volt was Kenny Johnson. I hope I get that sub money. What the hell? How... <laughs> That's rough, bro. He got up out of there, man. Kenny moved the mixer. Kenny moved the mixer. But like I said, Group D. And at the end of the day, man, Group D was awesome. I think we all enjoyed those games. I think we all enjoyed how it went. You know, uh, I think it was it was Madden that's marketable. Madden that was popping. Man, that was fun to watch, you know. And I, I really, like I said, uh, Henry and Decroft was a great game. Rage and Decroft was a great game. Henry and, and Wesley, all them games, Wesley and everybody was a good game. I really thought, I really thought it was good. <sighs> you know, I really thought it was it was well done and executed really good. My man, noise right there with the two mumps. There he is. Yeah, it was best group to watch. But as we said that, tell the noise, man. I appreciate you. But like I said, as we said, it was the best group to watch, right? But at the end of the day, all those guys are going to lose to somebody with no quarterback. Uh, Noah looked good. Uh, and, and we'll talk about Noah. Listen, I, I I don't have anything bad to say about Noah. Noah just continues to look solid on defense. And, I mean, run-wise, I think he's as good as anybody running the ball. You know, I, I think... As far as like run stick and run vision, I think he's second to none with that. You know, like something I little man, I don't think little man and joke are that real are that good running the ball. I really don't think they're that good of runners. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Noah's a better runner than them. Yes, we definitely will be showing them. Yes, one from I mean, what do you want to one fumble by a runner we've known all year? That the, the the running back doesn't fumble like that's something we're that's we're really not going to see, you know, going forward. But let's let's take a look at the bracket because that's what we really I know that's what we really want to talk about. Um, let's take a look at it. I got to figure out how I can get this here, this here. Can I put this over here? Boom. Do that. There we go. We're going to do that. All right. Let's take a look at the bracket now. And we can talk about it. I almost want to do 
polls for each of these games to pick these games, really. Do you guys want to do polls or you want to know who I like, really? That, that That's what I'll ask you guys. Do you want to do polls or you want to know who I would pick? Because, I mean, I think polls could be pretty cool and see who the chat picks and then have the podcast, official podcast. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we can talk about both and then we can do polls. Uh, really, I got to make this smart so I can work, work my Twitch and my... I got to do this. Hold on. Let's see if we can do this. Boom. There we go. Let's work with it like that. Um, Yeah, so the first game we got to talk about, man. Mills and Pavin. Let's talk about Mills and Pavin. Who do you guys like? Um, Who do you guys expect to be moving on from that one? Uh, like I said... Pavin looked really good. Is he going to have something for that blitz? You know what I'm saying? For that blitz, is that something that he's going to be prepared to deal with? I'll move this over here, actually, even more. Is Pavin going to be prepared? Because Kiv, honestly, Kiv did not look good against it. You know, and that's somebody he practices with. Or, you know, is he going to be more prepared than Kiv was? Right, we really thought Kiv would be more prepared for that blitz and he'd be ready to go. You know, that's what kind of we thought. But at the end of the day, Kiv did not look good against that blitz. So, who, what's our poll going with? Put the poll on three minutes, man. All right, how do we get? All right, you can't put channel. What? What happened to my poll? Pavin has hot route master. Okay. He runs against it, Brandon. Brandon, what do you what do you mean he runs against it? He doesn't have a running back. You know, that's rough. You know, oh, League Ops has some polls up. Okay, let's see League Ops polls. We'll see. We'll take a look at the League Ops polls. What are we doing? So Pavin is kind of, what, what is this poll? Why do we get another poll? Bro, who is running the polls, bro? What's going on right now, chat? I honestly, I I do feel like Pavin can win this game. I'm going to vote Pavin. I'm going to go Pavin. Um, I do feel like he can win this game. Um, I. Yeah, but to be honest, Kellen Winslow is not his running back. He only runs when he needs short yardage. He's not going to run the whole game, chat. Like, he, that's not an... Like, oh, my God. No, damn. Pavin is flooding this one. Almost 150 to 20, chat? Really? Did you guys not see what Mills did to Kiv? Did you not see what Mills did to Kiv? One, almost 200 to 20. 90% of you guys are going Pavin over Mills. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, all Mills need is one one touchdown, really. All right, what, Pavin's in a better spot with Hot Route Master. What is the biggest difference with that as opposed to Kiv. He can put more routes. He can maybe go Pat Sale type of route combo. He's not going to do an angle route to the running back. He's not going to do an a, 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 what's sticking up route to the tight end. That's not going to happen. You know? Okay, now the, now, all right, now the votes all of a sudden are going crazy, Mills-wise. Okay. He has a week to lab, but, but this is what I'm saying, Scott. You don't think Kiv knew what Mills was going to run? Pavin does have Vic. That's a W. He's got a faster release, even though Kiv had the gunslinger. I don't think Mills has to be perfect. I feel like Pavin has to be perfect. That's the opposite. You know? All right, why did y'all put that in? That's why y'all don't control the fucking polls. That's why I do the polls. I don't know which one of you jackasses thought it was, oh, I'm going to put a poll up. No, 
I control the polls so I can turn off that channel point shit. God damn. That's what I'm saying. They don't turn it. Oh my God, dude. How do we have 700 fucking votes? We have 800 votes. Guys, just keep flooding the votes, man. 800 fucking votes. Good job, man. Good job. Good job. Great fucking work here at the Needed Podcast, man. Great work, boys. Good job. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I, listen, I'm done with polls. I'm going to make the next poll, all right? But I'm not reading another. I'm not looking at Pavin versus Mills again. That's not happening. I'm picking Pavin. That, I feel like that's kind of a consensus... And we're gonna move Pavin up to the next to the next round, man. To face off a joke on that epic matchup that we saw in the group play. Uh, so let's go on to vote versus journey. I will make the poll. If one of you assholes come through and make a poll, you are banned and will lose your mod. Question. Now, let's talk about Joel and Vinny. Obviously, this is a matchup of the club finals with that that run heard around the additional vote. Yeah, we don't do additional votes. Duration. We can go, ah, uh, let's go five minutes with the vote. There we go. Vote versus Journey. Go ahead. Vote away, boys. All right. No, my caps lock was on. My cap, no, my caps lock was on, and I was like, do I want to keep it? But yeah, Justin, keep going. You have three underscores in your name. But this is the rematch from the club finals. So we think about this like we think about this all the time. Like, whew, can can Journey stop Volt? I feel like Journey has been in that three three five wide, much like everybody else. Is he going to be able to contain that human joystick bow? Uh, and then I, I'll be honest, Volt's run defense was bad against Joke. Worst run defense of the tournament. Uh, so journey might have a field day running the ball. If you're journey, you're definitely watching what joke did to vault the runs that were successful for joke. Uh, you're in Oakland. I mean, you have the hot route master if you need it. Also, um, I know journey is going to go to that tight slots. Um, one thing journey likes to do out of tight slots more than most run the inside zone, you know, is, is, and is vault going to be able to stop the inside zone out of his three, three, five, three wide. 335 three, normal. Because we know if Journey goes to tight slots, Volt is going to run 335 three, normal. So is he able to shoot that inside zone? Also, if that's the case, is Journey able to motion block to get an extra blocker to stop Volt from shooting that inside zone? So one of the under under you you know under one of the not under one of the under talked about uh parts of this game is can Volt stop Journey's inside zone out of tight slots? Um, yeah, you have to factor in where Volt is mentally after the Mutt lost to W. That's a good point, you know. Yes, he did, Breeze. He did do that a couple times for sure and gave him a little bit of trouble. So, we'll see. We shall see what's going to happen. I feel like that's a that's a undervalued part of the game. Um, so we'll see. But... Volt's not going to win with the run defense he put out there with Joke. He's just not. That run defense would look like my defense in Weekend League. It was not not good. No matter how many... T- I mean, obviously, he scored five touchdowns. And Drenny was in the 3 3 5 wide. Run defense looked pretty good. Uh, if it wasn't for his controller fucking up, he wanted to give up many points to the Mills. Um, Drenny beat Mo fairly easily. I said, the one thing that killed Drenny against Kiv, I thought Drenny was playing out of out of character because we saw Kiv struggle so much against the Blitz. I thought Journey played out of character, tried to Blitz him a little bit too much. You know? So you you were getting out of pocket. You, were, you weren't contributing. You were just complaining. Like, it's a Tuesday night, everybody's chilling, and you're a complainer. Nobody likes a complainer. The, the worst thing in life to be is a complainer. You know? That's just how I feel. You know, so... We shall see. What is the poll running at right now? We're 100 to 49. Y'all like Drenny? I'll be honest. I'm going to go ahead and pick Drenny. I'm going to move Drenny on in this list right here. 
I think we all I, I think we all kind of like that pick. Whoa. Didn't want to do that. So we're going to move Drinny up right here. Bang. Drinny Kiv, Pav and Joke. I mean, that 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 quarterfinals right there is pretty nuts, honestly. That quarterfinals, yo, that quarterfinals is pretty nuts. Joke, Pav, and Kiv, Drinny. That that's a tough little final eight right there. But let's move on to the next, the net, the bottom, the bottom group. I'm saying I'm gonna vote Journey on my little poll right here. Let's go to the bottom group now. As we talk about Henry and Clef, I mean this is Black Madden had to play each other the first round. I guess Mills is still here. Black Madden versus Black Madden. Um. Black man versus black man. I mean, I'm going to go clef pretty much this whole way through unless you guys, unless we have like a 75% vote against clef. Uh, what do you guys think? I think one, I think clef got to play a little bit better offense. He played good the first half versus little man. I feel like every game versus, when someone goes 0-3, I think the scheming games can kind of get thrown out. But clef lost to the other two people. Like he lost to Noah, he lost to little man. So I feel like he has to tighten up on offense. I feel like we can kind of say that about everybody in the tournament. They have to tighten up a little bit on offense. You know? The, oh, because the... I mean, why, why would they switch? Journey said, if they, if Journey said in the chat if they switch... If they win, they switch. I really don't know how that works, but Journey is a lower seed. If both three seeds, were, oh, the, the twelve, the twelve and the threes are messing me up. So Journey is the three seed. Or Poppin is the three. I, I'm like, yeah, Poppin is the three seed, huh? Okay, Jesus. So I gotta do this all over. God damn it. Journey and Pavin are three seeds. Mills was higher than Journey? Journey beat Mills. This is fucking crazy. God damn it. Let me go find this this graph. I can just do this. There we go. There we go, Chad. There we go. There we go. So Pavin and Journey would flip in this situation. That's kind of that's kind. I like it the other way. Boo! I like the I like the matchups the other way. I like the matchups the other way. There, Chad. To be honest with you. So we would have Pavin going down here. Boo! I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of disappointed, honestly. I like the matchups the other way. I like Kiv Drinny. I like Joke Pavin. I feel like we're kind of getting. I kind of get we're getting like runners versus runners and passers versus passers. That's tough. Boom. So that's what it would look like. We're good like that. It's fun, but they they'll knock each other out, so it makes it tougher for them to win beat runners. Like what? You know what I'm saying? So y'all looking at what game looks fun to watch? I'm looking at who's gonna win the tournament. You know, I'd rather have Kiv beat Journey and then Pavin beat Joke and two runners be out. You know? Yeah, I don't know why they switched, but I uh, will move on to that. But all right, let's go down here. So Clef is the three seed and Wesley is the three seed. So if both of them win. Now we wrote Henry versus Clef as we get back to this one. 
So let's get back to that. As I do the poll, let's do a poll, Henry Clef, real quick. See, my caps lock is still on, but fuck it. Y'all gonna do it like that. Two minute poll. So who you guys like, Henry versus Clef, with my caps lock on? Honestly, like I said, Clef got tightened up on offense. Uh, I believe Henry. Did we see Henry play? All right, get played Wesley. So that get that honestly would give. If you're looking at Henry, if you're in Clef's perspective, you can watch him play Wesley. Uh, whatever he did in Group D against Wesley, pretty much going to be what he does against Bunch. Whereas Clef didn't play against Bunch at all, so it's going to be hard. For, Henry doesn't really have a lot of film to watch what Clef would do defensively against Bunch. Not that it's going to be anything spectacular. But I feel like Clef does have a little advantage in that, that he saw Henry play another bunch guy in Wesley in his groups recently. So I think as far as what he's scouting and things like that, I think Clef has a little bit of advantage. I like Henry's, uh, I like what he's doing with the conductor. Seems like it looked pretty good. I pretty much will always pick uh, Clef for the most part. So it's tough for me to do that, you know. So, But like I said, a passer versus a passer. Uh, it's you can't take out runners if the passers aren't playing them. So, at the end of the day, a member of Black Madden is going to lose, and a member of the passing community is going to lose here. So that's really the roughest part, you know. Bunch being Noah. Now Wesley and Noah have played so much this year. Wow, we are like fifty-fifty right here. 50-50 right here, Clef and Henry. This is the probably the toughest vote ever on the new podcast. 67 to 69. I'm voting for Clef right now. Fuck you. 68 to 69. That's actually insane. Now it's tied up 69 to 69. Clef takes a one-point lead. This is actually insane that this vote is this tight. You know? actually tough and clef out of nowhere the last second win right there 74 to 73 in the chat that's actually that's actually as tight as possible pause clef by one that's a huge win that that that, that, that that's tough so we'll move clef on i i don't think there's a i don't think there'll be another vote that would be that close than that one But Clef, we, Clef uh, man, we don't even know where Clef is going to wind up because, oh, did that shit not work? Oh, my God. Because if Wesley wins, then Clef goes down to play Decroft. Haha, I'm learning, chat. You see me? So let's talk about Noah versus Wesley, man. Honestly, they've played a lot. I don't know if, I, I'll be honest, I don't think, as much as he's played him, I don't know if Wesley's comfortable against Noah. I, I, I'm i still Team Wesley. I am. I think I, he didn't play as well as I thought he would in the groups. I don't know. I thought he would do pretty well in this group. I, I really did. Um, but who do we like, Chet? That's what I'm saying. Like, Do we go with the passer over the runner here? Got to go runner. I feel like that's the safe bet to go runner. You know, like now these guys have played a lot all year. If you guys remember, they played I want to say the final four of DC or at least the final eight. You know, so for me, they have played a lot. Sort of as the poll is up, they have a lot of familiarity. Uh, it's we don't see Noah losing, but I can't root for him. That's fair. Um, that's definitely. The Final Four DC, they've played a lot of money games. As someone that played 2K with Wesley and was always like, "Bro, Wesley, do you want to hop on? And, do you want to play 2K right now?" He would always say, "I'm playing a no, I'm playing a money game against Noah." So these guys have played honestly. These guys have played probably 50 times at least. All right, so uh, the a lot of familiarity with each other. This is I, I, honestly most of the time they've played has been regs. And most of the time, or DC when they play in the Final Four. But, so from, this is salary cap. So, 
Wesley can pick his offense, can pick his plays, can pick his players, uh, can pick his abilities. So it's definitely going to be a little bit different. I do think uh, that's a good point, Shizzo. I think Noah's energy is likable. He is 1 million percent. The only thing that you don't like about Noah is that he can't pass. You know, and and that kind of this year kind of naturally makes us hate those people, you know? Over under 24 points. That's a good that's a good number. I don't know. I I would say over that. You know, I don't know. Yeah, Noah has good energy. He's got a good story. He's been become a great player, especially defensively. All I feel like every, I feel like all these guys are good defensively. I, I, who do you got? Who would you? I mean, Volt probably got to be, probably the weakest defensive player left, right? My man Skino, what's up, man? Clef is the weakest. The Clef, yeah. I mean, Clef defense has not looked good. Um, you're right. Noah wins this one, 67, 76 votes to 37. So we're going to move Noah up. So essentially, if Noah wins, then Clef plays Little Man again, and Noah plays Decroft, right? Since both three C's didn't win. Man, y'all got Noah over my man Wesley. See, I, I'm I'm rooting for Wesley in that one. I can't say you guys are wrong. I can't say that, but I'm Team Wesley. Uh, team Tina, or whatever what you call him, Team Tina. Oh my god. Team Tina. Oh my man Shizzle. All right, remind me after the show. I got you, Shizzle. It's kind of a like bad time. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, I'm kind of in the middle of this. But I got you. <laughs> Team Westby. And I am wet. I, I do hope Wesley wins. But y'all pick Noah. We can move Noah on. Let's get to the quarterfinals. Let's get to these. Let's get talking quarterfinals. Uh, as we see the top of these, Joke versus Journey. Let's put that poll up. Joke versus Drenny. Obviously, this was a Final Four matchup in the Madden Club Championship in which Drenny won because, honestly, Joke could not stop the running net. Now, remember, now if you guys remember, Joke was in blast. He was in New Orleans. He had wide receivers. He had abilities on his quarterback and his wide receivers. Um, but this time, he doesn't. So, and, and one thing I remember for being there and hearing Joke talk was that he had shitty linebackers in his 3-4. So, that contributed to... Drenny actually ran all over him, and the part of the reason was because Joke had cap on offense. This time around, Joke has no cap on offense. Well, he does, but not a quarterback, so not exponential cap on offense. So he's going to have the linebackers. He's going to have the DBs. He's going to have the D-line to stop the run. So uh, Joke doesn't have the X-factor, my man says. Uh, Joke doesn't have the X-factor. We know Drenny does kind of have that X factor. Drenny has that clutch gene, so to say, right? Drenny had, you guys trust Drenny in the clutch, right? Like in a big game, we trust Drenny. I, I mean, I feel that way. I feel like he has the it factor. He's, and part of it, I feel like Drenny doesn't know that he's in a big part. And also, you guys know when you're in jokes position, right? Where you always come up short, that gets into your mind mentally. You know, is it going to happen again? You know, it's kind of like Phil Mickelson with his major drought or the Red Sox, how they could never beat the Yankees, never win a championship. Now these guys beat these droughts, but it, it does weigh on you and weigh on you. I can never get this done. I can't win. Uh, do, when am I going to choke again? Is it going to happen again? Mentally, it gets tougher and tougher to then get over the hump, you know, when you continually fail at it. So it's definitely a, a mental edge for Journey in this matchup, you know. Journey has Disney on his side. He's going to have a bandana on, which we can all agree. I hope we know, you know, I hope we know that uh, Mills started the bandana. I hope we all know that and re are reminded of that consistently. Um, that it's not jokes. But let's see. Drenny wins this battle right here, 79 to 39. That's a tough game, really. 
Journey can pa- Journey is not a. Uh, I don't know how to explain it about Journey. I'm not. Journey is not a bad passer. You know, he's not high powered, but he's not. The difference between Joke and Journey as far as passing is Joke would always make a mistake that would kill him. You know, and Journey would never kill himself like that. He would never, you know, hurt his his chances of moving on. Whereas Joke would do that. I'm gonna move Journey on right there. Boom. I tell you, I'm not feeling the Dolphins. I don't know if I can have Journey winning this tournament right now. But let's talk about Kiv and Pavin, man. How are we thinking about that? If that comes to fruition, what are we going to do, man? Yeah, the vote, I mean, you know. But Joker's played really good. Journey has the ability to pass. I think they both have good teams. Journey, we talked about Journey has one of the best teams. Uh, what's up? What about Kiv and Pavin? I, like I said, we've seen Kiv. I, honestly, I'll go out there and say I think Kiv has had the best defense all year. Be honest. Like as much as we talk about, we talk about Joke and Mo, and who else we talk about super on defense, man. Noah and Mills and and Drenny on defense. I mean, I really think Kiv has had the best, the best defense, man. You know, I think Kiv has had the best defense all year. You know, so who do you guys think as the vote as the votes are coming in right now? If you guys are watching this on YouTube, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. But you can be here Tuesday nights to get these votes in and get these discussions. Um, like I said, I I think Kiv has had the best defense. I, I he's been bad. He's been flat out bad on offense this year. You know, and it's 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 tough to see Kiv. Uh, playing offense and not expecting him to just go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so for me, I, I definitely think uh, if he puts it together on offense, he can win the whole tournament. Um, you know. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about it. Let's see where the votes are. We are 70% going Pavin or going Kiv over Pavin right now. That's kind of I, I do feel like Kiv will eventually put it together, and uh, playing playing against that that bear was kind of tough to watch for Kiv. Pavin will give him a little more of one four six. Although I think Pavin's one four six has been really good, especially against Bunch, as we saw him. Uh, well, we saw him play Bugs, who isn't exactly you know Barry Bunch, but. All right, we're going to move on Kiv on this final foe. Move up Kiv to final foe, and we get our Journey versus Kiv matchup. Seems to always be one of the best every single time it happens. Every single time it happens seems to be one of the best matchups. So let's move down. Talk about Little Man versus, versus Clef. Now, if it wasn't for Lucky Runs, I don't know how Little Man would score. You know, how would Little Man score without these lucky runs? I don't know. But at the end of the day, if we've seen all year, lucky runs happen. Lucky runs are going to happen. And Clef's, I'm going to be honest, Clef's run defense has not been good this year, really. You know what I mean? His run defense has not been good. Of the people left in the tournament, I, 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 in this final eight that we have, I would one thousand percent say Clef is the, the worst person defensively on this list. You know what I'm saying? So it's definitely gonna be a tough matchup again, but I do feel like once again it's a rematch. You get to play somebody you just played a couple days ago. You get to look at what they were doing defensively, see what their thoughts were. Be a little bit more prepared for it. My man Z Money with the tier one. That's it. Yeah, I think Clef. I think Clef loses the little man. Now, nah, y'all know I'm going to put Clef over it. And that, if the vote says little man, I'll go little man. Tell me what you guys think, really. Yeah, we'll see. Little man is king of the fighter. I, I really, if I was betting, I wouldn't want to be be the person that bets against little man. That's rough. 
Uh, IZ, I don't know, bro. They said they switched. It's weird. It's weird. They're both three seeds or something weird happened there, honestly. Jab, that's how they, everybody's been playing all year. Hope for that breakout run. Get that breakout run and get it popping. Yeah, it might come down to witness you lying. That might come down to who user picks. You know, I see this poll looking like we got cleft by a little bit. Cleft by a little bit. I'm going to move Clef on up. Listen, I, it's going to take a lot for me not to pick Clef to win this tournament. Win this tournament. Now, what we got after that? D. Croft versus Noah. Man, I want to just snap pick D. Croft in my mind. I want to, but I don't think that's fair to the Noah man, chat. What are we thinking here? D. Croft, Noah. Talk to me about what your thoughts are. D. Croft has had some of the better defense for the run all year, really. What do you guys think, man? Poll is up. Poll is live. Poll is live. D. Croft is winning the belt. Noah Cook and Croft. Noah is not clutch. I, I really... Yo, you know what's crazy? I really have been saying all year, there's no way you don't bring a quarterback to the party. <laughs> oh, me. But at the same time, I, I haven't run into a game where I can say, damn, I bet that person wished they had a quarterback. You know, I feel like it really hasn't hurt people that much. You know? It does take Decroft a lot of time to score, but he has hit some big plays over the top as well. Um, Yeah, this is a tough game. No, Jesse, I'm telling you, one thing about talking consistently and not, like, having a break to catch your breath, or that's, like, constantly breathing makes sure you run out of oxygen in your head. Honestly, it's not even like tired. You just need to like, you're not breathing because you're talking so much so fast. You're not breathing all the way through. Yeah. You think he's, you think D. Croft has been missing reads? Okay. D. Croft is getting flooded. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I honestly, I want to my heart pick against everybody that doesn't have a quarterback. I want everybody that doesn't have a quarterback out of the tournament. As we can see right now, that Noah in this current bracket, Noah is the only person without a quarterback. So do we want him out of the tournament? Are we cutting him out of the tournament? I will say I'm going to go with the poll. Noah's defense is good. You know, it really is good. Uh, D. Croft has played good offense, you know. D. Croft, 73%. That's pretty nuts. But I'll move him up. Like I said, that's pretty nuts. I'll move him up. I'll move him up. 73%, I think, is super. That's why I go back when I talked about rage, man. Like, people just go, oh, man, I ain't going to do that. People really just get to the point where they go, oh, I know who that guy is. Let me pick him. You know? And it's tough. It's tough to really pick a runner, you know? I, and I, I will tell you, I I like Noah versus Decroft way, or Clef versus Decroft way more than I liked him against Noah. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much. I, I would be happy if this happened. I don't, I, I don't, I don't like Clef versus that Noah guy, bro. I don't know what it is, bro. I don't know. All right, so we go to this final four. We got Drini and Kiv. I'd be happy. Not that it's not about D. Croft. It's more about Clef. Don't really like that. Clef don't really like that Noah guy.
Yeah, that nah, bro. Yeah, the club, but it mattered though. It's hard to say that it don't matter. Every game kind of matters a little bit, but all right, Journey vs. Kiv. I feel like this is the most 50 50 ever. Journey vs. Kiv. I'm, I'm going by the votes. If I'm going by the votes of the poll of the chat, that's what I'm going by. So don't 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 come yelling at me. Journey vs. Kiv. Here we go. I feel like these guys this is just instant classic every time they play. I feel like this is probably the most I feel like this is probably the most 50-50 matchup we could have in Madden right now, right? I I don't know. I You know what? It's just crazy cuz like you know what you're going to get out of the runners. You just know what's going to Yeah, I, I probably would have picked Noah to go on to the Final Four, really. Black Madden kind of ass. Oh, Journey's going to drop a TikTok soon, bro. Oh, uh, we want to... You know what we're going to get. We're going to get Volt going to beat Journey. Mills going to beat Pavin. <laughs> Henry and Clef is Henry and Clef. No, we're going to beat Wesley. No, we're going to beat D-Croft. Lil Man. We're going to, the final four are going to be Joke versus Volt and Lil Man versus Noah. If that's the case, bro, oh, my God. A lot of picks. Bro, we're going to have Joke versus Volt, Lil Man versus Noah. Lights, what's good, man? We chilling, kicking it. Well, who we got in this matchup? Let's take a look at the vote. Expecting a 50-50. We got Kiv by a little bit. Kiv by five votes right now. That's, like I said, man, if you're not here voting Tuesday nights, next Tuesday we will definitely have the review of these games. We're going to talk more about gameplay because it's going to be, I feel like when there's so many games, it's hard to pick one game to watch gameplay from. Like what, you know, we could have, we, we, I mean, it's just when there's one game or two games, Hopefully, we'll get whoever wins this tournament on the podcast next week talking about their games as we have Drinny win this vote 67 to 65. Oof. 67 to 65, Drinny. That's tough. So, Drinny, moving on to the finals, man. If Drinny made this final of all the success he's had the last two years, Drinny, Drinny's got to be creeping in the top three. He's got to be super creeping. I mean, the run he's made the last couple years is special, you know. This would be like four final games for him. That's like a Skimbo-esque type of run, really. We see Journey in the finals, man. Boom. If that happened. Now we got Clef versus D-Croft. I know where I'm voting, chat. Talk about that. What would you guys go? Clef versus D Croft. Honestly, don't feel like. I, I mean, part of me feels like this. Part of me does feel like, yo. Part of me does feel like. D Croft offense is good, but I think it's a little too janky. I don't understand with Janky. I don't know. I just feel like... I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know if he got safe. Oh, I really don't... He does. He has been playing conservative, honest. He, yeah, well, I'll tell you this. Look at it like this, Q. If he gets by Henry and a little man, D. Croft is like, all right. I mean, that, that would be tough. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to be honest, too. 
I don't like D. Croft in these Bengals jerseys, bro. I don't like D. Croft in the Bengals, boys. I, I want that we we do odds before every game live on the stream. So May fourteenth, which is what Thursday, will be live for all of these games. May fifteenth will be live for all of these games, and May sixteenth will be live for this one. And if Clef plays run defense, it'll be good, bro. I don't think Clef lost to a passer. Honestly, who I don't even know who last who lost to the passers in these games, really. Who has ever lost to these passers? Oh, we got D. Croft on the chat's vote. Are y'all just all on the D. Croft train? Okay. We all on the D. Croft train. Okay. Okay. All on the Croft train. Okay. Okay. All on the D-Croft train, okay? Bam, so that's the chat's vote. It's the chat's poll. That's the finals. That's tough. So, I mean, I think we'd all... We'll see what happens. Let's do a vote right now. Drenny versus D-Croft in the finals? Bro, Ken, I, we've seen you sucking Henry's cock for the last 30 minutes, bro. Please type another sentence of how you think Henry's going to win. Henry has been out of this fucking make-believe bracket we've been making for 45 minutes. Please continue to tell that, bro. We have seen it. YouTube has seen it. Everybody in the chat has seen it. Jesus. Christ, man. I swear to God, that's Henry's creep. Not mad. It's like, bro. Okay, like what? Do you, like, okay, bro. Okay, we've seen it. Thank you. Literally, like, my bad. I, I want y'all to contribute to the pie. Y'all help the podcast a lot, man. I appreciate y'all, man, coming through. Holy shit. So if this make believe ass finals happen, who would you guys pick, Drenny or D Croft? I mean, Black Man and Lost. I really want to see this guy, Ken. What his name is, bro? He just made. He literally just made the account March twenty third. Okay, he's been following since March twenty three. Could be a Henry creep. Could be a creep. Ken, we need more info on, on Ken. He has no profile picture on his Twitch. Okay, I'm going to show you guys right there. Boom. Oh, no, I can't bring it out of Twitch. Damn. Ken R. Crasto. Ken R. Crasto. Could be a creep. And now, this is how I feel about Journey. Can we really call Journey a runner right now, chat? He has a quarterback. There is five people still left in this, what, 16, 12 people are left. Five of them have no quarterback. Is Drenny a runner right now? I mean, he's a runner, but this year, I feel like he can't be considered a runner. Like, in this man, I feel like he's almost a passer. Right, Chet? Like, I feel like this is a, this is a tough... Debate. I thought about this, man. He's not a runner, runner, but he's a runner. Breeze, you're right. I know Journey's a runner. Journey's, Journey's. I hate Journey, bro. I like every time I play Journey is. Every time I think he's gonna pass, he's gonna run and like, bro, like. Fucking Journey, bro. He's a runner. Yes. He plays football. Imagine having any underscores. Journey is a runner, bro. Journey, do you think you're a runner? Journey is in the chat. Wins the vote by 71%. So, Journey is our winner, a champion of the podcast. I'll be honest. Journey with the Dolphins jerseys. As Journey is in the chat. Journey, talk about these Dolphins journeys. Where's Journey 2 at? 
Zerini 2 definitely got some votes in. Bluff somebody else. Don't bluff me or bluff somebody else, bro. If Journey wins another belt, I mean, he, you kind of got him. If Journey wins this tournament, I mean, you probably almost at this point got to put him over Skimbo. Right? Because they would have the same belts. Journey would do it in three years. I mean, that, that's, I feel like Journey would be right there. If he, bro, like for real, like, he'd be super high, really. You know what I'm saying? Nah, Journey, you you messed up. Journey, Journey, who is your team, bro? We gotta add. We talked about this earlier, Journey. Like you're really not a football fan, and it's hard not to root for football for non-football fans. Bro, you know what else? Do you know what else I feel about Journey? I feel like Journey is not good at anything. He just really goes out there and throws the ball around and wins, bro. Seriously. Like, he just balls. Like, I, yeah, he play, Oh, yeah. I mean, Journey always plays defense. But he don't, like, he's not a wild type of player. You feel what I'm saying? If Journey was about the emails back. Journey's not Journey's not a fan of football. Pro, honestly, if it wasn't for Madden, I don't think Journey would even watch football. He wouldn't know the rules of football. Journey is Kawhi. Is Journey Kawhi? Journey might be Duncan. Journey might be Duncan. To a Tim Duncan type. I don't. I know. I don't understand. We talked about that, bro. We, it's hard for us to root for them, Noah. I don't know, man. I don't even know how it was. Hard. Oh yeah, now. Oh yeah, now we're playing. Well, let's play Madden. They don't even know any of the football players and stuff. Journey is Bob Cousy. I think Journey's Tim Duncan, bro. I think Kiv is like a more like a Nash or a Stockton type. No, Kiv would be more Pete Maravich. Journey, you're Tim Duncan, bro. Journey 1000% is Tim Duncan. Journey is not Mahomes. How is Journey Mahomes? Journey is Tim Duncan. Kiv is not Rodman, bro. Who's J.R. Smith? I might be J.R., bro. I might really be J.R. Journey is not Draymond. No, why? Y'all do... What what's wrong with Journey being freaking Tim Duncan? I feel like Journey is Tim Duncan. Speaking of All Star team, but what's up, bro? Boot up. Journey is not J.R. Smith. What? I'm done. Y'all just naming anybody now. Y'all really just naming everybody. Who is Pavin? Pavin? Who would Pavin be? Pavin might be like Lillard. Pavin might be Lillard. Nah, Pavin got he got a little flash to him. I don't think he's a hard working type. I think he's like a Lillard. Like he's like a scorer. You gotta give Pavin like a scorer. Nah, he's not Aaron Gordon. Y'all just naming anybody. It makes no sense. Pavin is Tony Parker. I like that. I like Pavin as Tony Parker. Oh, Devin Booker? That's not bad. I feel like Devin Booker's a loser, though, just because he's on a shitty team. I don't see Pavin as, like, I, I like Lillard better. D. Croft isn't, no. D. Croft is, like, D. Croft not in the NBA, bro. D. Croft is, like, I don't even know. D. Croft is, like, 
Nah, Provin is not Jimmy Butler, bro. Y'all the worst. D. Crawford, why is Dennis, why is D. Crawford Dennis Rodman? D. Crawford has khakis on and a golf shirt. And he said, Dennis, oh, we're done with this. We're done, chat, we're just done. We've gone too far. Y'all are just saying any name with any player. It has no correlation. Literally just naming anybody. That is what's going on. I'm just done with it. I'm done. I'm done. D. Crawford is Boban. I'm done. No, I'm done. This is, we're out. We're out with this conversation, man. We're just done. <laughs> Little man is Pat Bev, though. <laughs> Little man is definitely Pat Bev. Hands, bro. Yo, D. Croft is definitely a hands, bro. All right, all right, all right. I got me back on. The okay, you started putting some W's in the chat. Okay. D. Croft is definitely hands, bro. Yo, D. Croft 1,000% is Psycho T. Yes. Now I'm Kwame Brown. No, Kwame Brown, come on, bro. I at least gotta get like Dirk or something. Noah is Lambeer. I can see Noah as Lambeer. Okay. No, D Croft is D Croft is one thousand psycho T, bro. Yes. D Croft to Psycho T is like it don't get no better. Skimbo is K D. Stop it. Problem is Greg Oden. I could be KG. I could like me being KG. Okay. Clef is Westbrook. Mills is Draymond. Mills is like Tony Allen or some shit. I feel like problem... I feel like Problem got a little bit of Shaq. I feel like Shaq, Problem got to be Shaq. Just because, like, in his time, he was super dominant. You know what I'm saying? But now he's like Celtic Shaq. You know what I'm saying? But in his time, he was Shaq. You know what I'm saying? Clef is KD. Mills is Matt Barnes. Wow, yo, it is just... Popping could be a little D-Wade-ish. Okay. No, Little Man is Pat Bev, bro. Problem is not big baby. You know, gonna dis we can't disrespect problem, bro. Who's who's Rasheed Wallace? Little man is Pat Bev, bro. Little man is Pat Bev. D. Croft is Psycho T. Wesley is not Steve Kerr. Dying Wesley, bro. Volt is not big baby, bro. Volt. I don't think Volt has an NBA comparison, bro. I really don't. I'll take Sheed. Sheed was the man, bro. Mo is Larry Bird. No, Mo is more of a Lambeer type. Problem is not Bar. I think problem is Shaq. Clef is Giannis. Bolt, Greg Ostertag. Probably Shaq, bro. Yo, Shaq was dominant in his time, bro. Prob was super dominant. Problem is still the best player ever, bro. And it's uh, uh, no one's gonna really pass problem for like another five years at least. There is no LeBron of Madden. There's no LeBron. Henry is Zion. Bro, I'm just... I'm over y'all. <laughs> Fault is big country. All right, all right, all right. The only, the only ones I could lock in is Pat Bev and Little Man, 100%. D. Croft is Psycho T. Tom Chambers. Henry Chris Paul. Joke is Draymond Green. Yeah. 
Yo, all right, first of all, we're not going to question. I mean, Wesley looked like a Tina, but we're not going to say he's a whole John Collins shed. Let's not get cri- Let's not get carried away, man. Even though he looked like Tina, he's still a Wesley, bro. Let's let's relax. All right, y'all getting too carried away. Kiv might be Luca. All right. Oh my god. Yeah, all right, we're back to saying anybody. All right, I'm really going to ban the chat. We're going to turn the chat off. We're going to turn the chat off. It's getting crazy. You guys are just naming anybody now. Mills is Gary Payton. I mean, I I can see Mills as a Gary Payton type. No votes, no homer picks. Clef wins in a landslide. I just... I really hope... I mean, I've never been... I've never been uh, big on, like, is this good for the game? Like, make sure it's good on ESPN. But when I say that, I also... Now I start thinking, like, would it be good if we had Joke versus Noah on ESPN, too? You know, would that really be good? And I also think, like, would a good game a good game on ESPN, would it help Madden that much? You know, would is the plus and, uh, you know, is the plus and, and negative that important for that ESPN game you know I think about that a lot like would it really suck to have people with no quarterbacks playing in the finals yes it would suck would it be awesome if we had Kiv versus Clef for the finals or another how about Kiv versus D Croft remember the game they had in Seattle club what if they had a rematch in the finals for that yeah but Donnie I just think about like I just think about is it really important that the game is good to watch you know for extra view you know potential madden fans of the future potential people that get into madden potential people that are interested in the game you know is it important that the game be entertaining be balanced be a good game is that important you know you know that's kind of how i feel That's what I'm saying. So I, 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 at this point, outside of my friendships, you know, with Buzz, Clef, Skimbo, whoever is that, outside of that, I kind of personally root for what would be best for this whole esport thing, you know, for us to grow, what would be best. I kind of root for that. Um, personally, I don't want to see runners um, win every tournament. You know, is that really the year we're going to have where four tournaments have been won? with people without passing. Like, as much as I say, you know, 09 is bad or 09 is the worst man ever, like, people did have to pass, you know? And, and when we look back at this man and you say, dude, people won every major without passing, that is the biggest negative to this whole year that cannot be ignored. It just can't, you know? And if that's the road, we're already three out of four majors done, and they haven't passed a win, are we going to get the fourth major, the cherry on top, the Madden Bowl end of the year tournament, and people still losing to people without quarterbacks? That would be actually nuts. Really. You know? That's awful. My man that dude personally with the tier one. Thank you. Gunshots are, I mean, that's not true because I know runners that don't like it, you know? I, I just, I'm not going to say I don't like the game. I, I, I honestly enjoy playing the game. But um, it's just, just rough. Just rough to, to argue this game amongst the, the best games ever and say, um, boom. Uh, is this the worst man ever type of thing, you know? Donnie, that's that's everybody, though, you know? That's that's also joke. 
Joker's run bunch. He's run tight flex. He's run, you know, bunch. He's run pretty much everything that, you know, has been good in the game. You know, same thing. Little man too, honestly. Uh, well, little man just like I said is the PG version of joke, but. Yeah, gunshots. What you want to do is, since you're a sub, you can go back and just start this whole show over, bro. You can start the whole show over and start from the beginning. I do. I, I disagree. My man, personally, with the five gifted, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, buddy. But yeah, yeah, run commit. Uh, that's probably when we look back this year, man. Run commit being better would definitely help. So that definitely hurt the whole year and whole. But because uh, you, you should have to have some little threat of passing. What would happen in the NFL if literally they put me at quarterback for for who won the Super Bowl for for the Chiefs? Or so, no, seriously, like the Niners. Now the Niners, Jimmy G. We can say whatever we want. He's not. He sucks. Whatever we want to say. What would happen if they literally put me at quarterback? Do you think they could win a game? That's what I'm asking you guys. Do you think it's possible? I I personally feel like they would go 0-16. <laughs> like, could they win a single game? Now, okay, here go back. Let's go back to this. Let's go back to this. No, but I, it's just it's just the threat. Sometimes the threat of a pass is enough. If you put me at quarterback, literally we'd never be able to pass. Now, here goes another question. In all seriousness, now I have been, I hate when people bring up, can Alabama beat the Browns? I hate that shit because college teams could never beat professional athletes. I don't care how bad an NFL team is and how good a college team is. No, they just, they simply can't. It will, it won't happen. NFL is grown men playing for their livelihood. It is. It's grown men that have been playing the whole. They're not beating. I don't care how fast, how quick these teams are. They're not beating NFL men. They're just not. It's not happening. Now, if I was at quarterback for the Niners and we played LSU or Alabama, seriously, could me at quarterback of an NFL team beat a college team? Now I. What I mean is that, <laughs> so the the college team literally knows that we can never pass. Could we win just running the ball and playing defense? Seriously. Just really think about it because that's like the equivalent of Madden right now. Literally, I wouldn't, but no, you, you guys think the NFL would still, I'd still win? No, nah, we no the NFL team would be the high school team. Let's not get crazy now. But I'm not. But I'm saying I'm not. I'm not going to pass. That's my point. Literally, I'm just running, just handing the ball off. But a college team knows that they know we cannot. We don't have a pass play in the, in the playbook. Can we still win? Yeah. Well. Yeah. We'll have the best running back ever. You know. We'll have who's the best running back in the league right now? Saquon. We have Saquon. You know, could the NFL team won? No, Jimmy G has to pass. Yeah, give me Derrick Henry, Saquon, whoever y'all think is the best. All right, Christian McCaffrey, give me him. Could we win? That's a good question. Wesley, well, so you think that? Like, with an NFL team. Facts, Chase. All right, Chase, you get to. I, I could get a handoff off. I don't know if I could catch the snap, though. Okay. You really still think the NFL could beat the college team with me at quarterback? Yeah, Wesley for sure, definitely. I mean, they would dominate the line, but literally, it's even a. But Cordae, that's my point. I feel like you could run commit in real life or something. Like it wouldn't even be one on ones. There would be like eight people in the box. Like you know what I'm saying? Like they'd be like goal line defense. I guess we could run jet touch passes and shit. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, what, like, what's the 
And that's, uh, and we said it, that's the equivalent of Madden right now. As we're going on a crazy tangent. The show is over two hours, man. But that's why I asked you guys, YouTube, if you're still here, you guys know, put the cash app or put the PayPal below, man. I'm the, I bless three or four people every week for paying attention to the podcast. It's going to keep popping, man. Yeah, I mean, I might fumble the snap, but like, I don't know, man. But this is what's crazy. Like, um, I don't know what the 10 cap can do. Do you even have to cover the receivers? I guess the 10 cap can get it out there. But it's really, it's this is my thing probably. It's really not like a one-on-one thing. Yeah, I, 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 I. That's the equivalent of what Madden is right now, man. I only got one. I only got one running back, though, Corday. I'm an eight cap. I might be an eight cap quarterback. That's a good poll. I I think I want to make this a Twitter poll. One running back, so we gotta use our timeouts. All right. Well, so I'm so for the Twitter poll, I'm gonna say I I become the quarterback of the 49ers. Could the 49ers? Who's the best college team? Uh, LSU, right? With uh, what's the name? Bordeaux, Bordeaux. What, what the fuck? Joe Burrow, Bordeaux. Fucking wines right now. LSU is the best college team, right? So we go. If I no, I they make me the quarterback of the Niners. Who would win, LSU or the Niners? Wow, no, just stop with the I'm from Ohio shit. Are y'all gonna vote on that? All right. Well, this was the I'm gonna record that right now and put it on Twitter. Hold on. This was the Needle Podcast episode eighty. Comment below, man. Would I win with the Niners or would LSU beat me? That's my question now. Cause we can agree with this chat, right? LSU's defense is kind of like a passer salary cap defense. Like, good in some spots. NFL players in the secondary. Maybe a little weak on the D-line. Maybe the linebacker's not as fast, right? That's a good equivalent, LSU being a passer's salary cap defense. I feel like that's a good equivalent. You know? By the way, this was the Needle Podcast episode 80. So comment below who would win, me and the Niners or LSU? LSU.